Good morning. Welcome to Transformation Day 2, Day 392 of the challenge. Progress, not perfection, everybody. Progress, not perfection. Am I right? Have you made progress? Are you here with us? Are you showing up for the second day or have you disappeared already? That will make a big difference in your life. How is everybody doing? Let's see some comments. We're going to have a short gardening tip. This is going to be a quick one today. Good morning, Ashley Kirby. Good morning, John Clark. Happy birthday, man. Good morning, Christina Whitaker. All right, Susan's here. Deborah Miranda's here. Holly Joe is here this morning. Good morning, Tina Marie. Not much in the news, everybody. It's Friday. It's Saturday. Anybody sleeping in? Good morning, Joanne Gurrell. Not Joanne. Not Eileen Fry. Not Tess Holock. Not Nancy Todd. Good morning, everybody. Rosemary. You have to give StreamYard your permission. Otherwise, you show up as Facebook user. Good morning, Mary Lynn Thalmer. Good morning, Yin Yang. Kathy Contreras sticking to something. Can't believe it. <laughs> Brenda Flynn. Good morning. Danielle from Australia. Who is new today? Who is new to the Transformation Challenge? Good morning, Tracy Pashley. Who's enjoying it? What's up, Peppa? Long time no see. That's one of my patients right there. What's up, Peppa? You must be in the transformation uh, part. Joan Kovacs, good morning. Elizabeth Owen, good morning. All right, let's get some people in here. Pat Zern, nice. Good morning. Sip on my jasmine tea here. How are y'all doing? <clears throat> Thelma Pacheco, good morning. Darlene, still at it. Good job. Good job, Jennifer Yoakum. Doing fantastic, everybody. Sipping on my green smoothie. Gin and juice. Listen, it is like, like slightly drizzling, so I might run, make a run for it. Inside if it starts raining. Lynette O'Neill, good morning. All right, so let me talk while we're waiting on some people to show up let me tell you about the news not much in the news all right um coronavirus numbers are man going up seventy-five thousand. so um we gotta stay safe man it's too early to open up it's too early to let down your guards i'm telling you if you go to a restaurant and it's too packed go home go to another restaurant um if the if the establishment doesn't require masks see it doesn't matter what the governor says if the governor removes a mask mandate or whatever you know you don't have to go there just don't just don't do it because numbers are going up vaccinations are for us going great but for other places are not so good so if you look at the worldwide chart the world numbers were coming down like that as the u.s numbers were coming down and now the worldwide numbers are going back up again very steep incline even though the u.s is kind of plateauing around seventy thousand. Now, why is this problematic? Because that means, um, you know, we're always lag behind Europe and Europe is just in trouble. France is um, in bad trouble. Um, Hungary, Poland, Spain, Italy, they're in bad, bad trouble. So we're going to see a spike here in the next three or four weeks. And I don't know if it's all because of the UK variant or if it's something else now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a French variant or something like that. Um and Brazil, in trouble, big time in Brazil. Brazil is a, is a new United States. 75,000 cases a day, uh, 3,500 deaths a day. And they don't have the infrastructure that we do, guys. So those numbers are going up. And they don't have the vaccines uh, like we do. So we can't open up to international travel or any of that stuff, right? Uh, there you go. Good job, Holly Joe. Welcome to the newcomers. Karen Harrison, what's up? Brenda, come on, girl. Join the challenge, Brenda. Be what you need, girl. So you got to stay safe, everybody. You got to get the vaccine whenever you can. And you got to still wear a mask when you're out in public just until we get more data on whether or not um, the vaccination stop your uh, transmission. Not much else in the news. I mean, there was a shooting in a Virginia beach where a couple people were killed and eight people were injured. I mean, people are going crazy out there, y'all. You got to stay safe, man. This is not the time yet. And I know you can say it's a pandemic. You can say it's because of, um, you know, pent up people, people, emotional health, psychological health. You can say whatever you want. 
call it. And I agree. You're absolutely right. Stay the fuck at home. <laughs> you know, but what's sad is like, you know, the, the grocery store shooting was crazy because you're just out there got, getting your groceries and someone does it. I mean, you just never, never know. Okay. Uh, and as I said, you know, 2020 doesn't officially end until April Fool's Day, April 1st. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm curious to see what happens there. What what we're in for? Maybe a stock market crash, something crazy. The South is going through some major storms, tornadoes. Y'all stay safe. A shipping uh, boat is um, stuck in the Suez Canal, so no no ships are going through the Suez Canal. So that's going to affect you guys. Watch your prices are going to go up because for all of the the inventory, they're going to be out of inventory. So they're going to, the prices you're going to see is uh, going to go up. Okay. Um, now, yesterday was Friday and we had 150, 160 people on. Now I'm seeing 96. So it's Saturday, man. Don't sleep in. Your life will change. Uh, I'll give you an example right behind me for the new people. That's Mr. Jones. That's my car. And it's an 07 Sequoia. I paid $8,000 for it. I paid, I traded in Betty White. Uh, which was a $2,000 car because she was starting to get old and, and losing her power. And then my Lexus dealership had this uh, 07 Sequoia for 8000 And I thought, man, if Lexus is willing to put it up for sale, then I know it's got to be solid. So I named him Tom Jones after the singer because he's a sexy beast, baby. He's a sexy beast. And why am I telling you about my damn car? Because I, I paid for that car last year, uh, about a year ago, from flipping uh, money I made from flipping furniture on Facebook Marketplace. Now with the stimulus checks all back out, and people are going crazy on Facebook Marketplace, man. So you can you can totally be selling your shit, right? Melissa, never sleeping in. That's right. Love your hair. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Should have three months. I don't know. <clears throat> 8000 bucks, baby. And he runs great, strong. We love him. But anyway, so we're going to start talking about money here in the next few days. And I just don't want to get people get bothered by that. But it's your your life can change under very, um, very quickly and very easily. If you will bookmark today's talk on your beliefs uh, and change your beliefs. But before we get started on my talk. I want to give you a little gardening tip. Okay. <clears throat> so for those who, <clears throat> this is your first time watching, this is my garden. This is the start of my garden right behind me. It's on the east facing wall. I put a, a water fountain the, uh, in the back. I actually bought little uh, Shibukin goldfish um, to go in the water fountain. So Mason had fun picking out the, little goldfish and um <clears throat> here's my gardening tip for you today with green onions all right now when you go to green onions from now on i want you to find the green onions with the longest roots nice big white bulbs and the longest roots and when and you only need to do this a couple of times but the first few times you uh cut off the tops the bottoms the roots leave a little bit extra on the root i'll show you so i made a uh, bulgogi korean barbecue last night and topped it with green onions so i went to the store and i look at that i found the ones with the largest longest roots you see that see how long these roots are and then when you chop them leave a little bit a little cap of white i would say a little about at least a third of the white attached then what you do is you soak them overnight i just i just cut off these uh water bottles and i use them because they'll prop themselves up you kind of want to prop them up like that soak them overnight and then you go put them the next day or second day there's no magic formula <clears throat> You plant them in the garden and you put a little bit of dirt over them. I'm going to show you here in a second. 
Okay. So, come on down with me. Now, what I've done is I've taken my green onions and I put them in this bowl. Isn't this cool? This was <clears throat> this pot. It's pretty shallow, but it came with the house. And um, they had it on the side of the house. And uh, it wasn't growing anything but trash. So I took it. And this is called my green onions ones. So I'm using this primarily for green onions. I did put a little tomato bush down here. <laughs> Christina, I said bush. All right. But you can see my green onions have come up. I put, check this out, right here. You just put a little bit of dirt down and then you cover it with a little bit of soil. Can y'all can y'all see that? I, I'll, I'll dust it back, there you go. You can see one right there, right there. That's a purple one. Those are purple green onions. And um, you see them coming up, here you go. Let me see if I can find it. So I'm literally, okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to do it right now, but you just make a little spot, look at the size of the roots on that guy, and you just nestle him down in there like that, just nestle him on down in there like that, and cover him a little bit like that, and you can see this purple one is already starting to come up, see the purple one right there? He's, he's having a little bud right there. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I got the green. These are starting. Now, some of you guys might be saying, but Dr. V, I like the white parts too. I can, I'll show you how to do that. When they start growing, you just cover them with leaves. You cover them with leaves. And that keeps the white part, the green parts from turning green. It'll keep the white part from turning green. So let me move this down. You can see down here at the bottom. Can y'all see that? There's whiteness. Does that make sense? Am I showing that to y'all? There's whiteness right there. Okay. All right. So I was the same way um, when I learned this tip. I was like, I don't just want green tops. I want the white bulbs. So put a comment if you also want the white bulbs. So I was like, I, I, I want the white bulbs too. I don't want just to eat green tops. Right? So the way to get the white bottoms is as, the, as they grow, you put leaves down. You, you keep them from the sun. The sunlight is what makes the green, the white part turn green. So I just layer more, more leaves on top. So that whole bucket is gonna be um, just full of green onions, right? Now, now don't, when you go to harvest them, don't pull them up out of the ground. You just take your scissors and you cut off as much of that white and you leave it in the soil and it comes back up. Does that make sense? So you just cut it and it will regrow again. So once I get this established, I sh you should never, ever buy green onions again. And I realize, you know, green onions are dollar eighty-seven cents, not that much. But dude, these are organic. They're fresh. You have them anytime. You can, uh, you know... You know you're not using any pesticides. You know what I mean? That's the key, man, to, to know about the whites. You got to cover it up, right? I want pancakes and bacon too, man. That sounds good, Brian. All right. Um, where's Week Week? <laughs> Excellent. Good tip. Good tip. So that's your gardening tip for the day. Um Make that a make that a thing. Yeah. So no new yeah. Plant those in the ground. Excellent. Let's get to talking about changing our beliefs. Ready? Let's go. 108 of y'all. People sleeping in, man. 
50 people sleeping in today. Oh, what about cucumber? Those grow easy from um, either seed packet. I buy them from um, the garden store and they, they're going to climb up this trellis. So I actually have a cucumber bush coming up. Okay. Good morning. Check this out. Progress, not perfection, y'all. Progress, not perfection. Welcome to Transformation Day 2. Um, and it's day 392 for the regular challenge. And I'm going to open up the regular challenge probably tomorrow to you guys for new people who want to join, who want to, who are enjoying this kick in the butts every morning. Uh, but we'll see. Today, we're going to talk about how to change your beliefs and, um, your homework today. So. It's an hour and an hour and 45 minute long PBS broadcast with Wayne Dyer. And I'm going to tell you, it, it will be an hour and 45 minutes that will change your life. You've got to watch this entire video today because it will change your life. Literally. Um, Wayne Dyer recently died. I, not that recent. I mean, probably three years ago now, four years ago. <clears throat> and he, was such a influence in my spiritual development. Very important teacher in my spiritual development. And he did several PBS broadcasts, but this is one of my favorite ones. And, um, and he talks, you know, ab about how do you manifest what you want in life? But Dr. Vaughn, I thought you were going to talk about beliefs. And that's, that's part of it, right? To get what you want, you got to believe it. And um, so it, it is really worth your time today. And it's a nice video that you can really just, um, you can put it on your television and sit and watch it. And it's very nice. Or you can just put on some earbuds and do your house chores, your gardening, whatever, your, your walk. And it will really touch your soul. I promise you, this is a great video. It's one of my favorites. Um, there was a time where I watched this video nonstop, like over and over and over again. And every time I watch it, um, I feel like I hear something for the first time. Like it is really powerful. And there are parts of it that are really funny, parts of it that are very touching. The end, if you catch the end, where he talks about, um, you know, um, uh, amazing grace, uh, which some people don't know this, but when I die, I've told this to Kizzy's mom and I've told it to Erica too. Um, I want to be cremated and, uh, I want to be celebrated with, um, bagpipes. I don't know why, but to me, bagpipes are so sad. And bagpipes playing Amazing Grace is how I want to go. And then I want my ashes spread into the ocean. So, um, so now y'all know what, what's going to happen to Dr. V when I die. <laughs> if you've never heard Amazing Grace and bagpipes, it is so stinking sad. Um, and the end of this video, he has the children's choir come up and he tells the story of Amazing Grace. And, um, <clears throat> and it's basically, um, he's, um, he's a slave trade ship captain and, um, he is hauling his human cargo one day and they are caught up in a storm and he is so scared that he's going to die and he looks on upon the human cargo, the slaves, and he sees the atrocity of uh, what he's doing. And so that night he makes a promise with God to stop doing it. And, and a divine download comes to him and he writes amazing grace. And that's the meaning of amazing grace. Did you know that? That it was a slave ship captain who wrote it. I was lost, but now I'm found. 
I was blind, but now I see. It's really about seeing the atrocities and the horror of what he was doing. And we, to this day, still see the ramifications of slavery in our protests and riots and what happened last summer and, and the inequities that still exist today. And um, it's really touching. And if you listen to the words of Amazing Grace, it brings you to tears, right? A little side note about Amazing Grace. Do you guys remember this, the TV show Gilligan's Island? <laughs> um, who remembers Gilligan's Island? Who remembers the theme song to Gilligan's Island? Sit right back and I'll tell a tale, a tale of a fateful ship. A fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship, right? So... Did y'all know that you can sing Amazing Grace to the tune of um, Gilligan's Island? It's the same rhyming pattern. So check this out. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound <laughs> that uh, saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. <laughs> so watch. I promise you, put a one in the comment section if you'll be singing that all day long today. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to show your kids, hey, sing Amazing Grace like Gilligan's Island. <laughs> um, now you know what to do on your next church like uh, sleepover bus camp. <laughs> so how to change your beliefs? Number one. You have to recognize, like, I was blind, but now I see. It is from this place where of you release this ego of yours and you say, man, like, what I know is not working. Like, my life sucks. I'm 250 pounds. I've regained weight. I'm stuck. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I'm in a dead-end job. What I know, not what I believe. But what I know is not working. See, some of y'all will say, I know it's the Democrats' fault. Some of y'all will say, I know it's the Republicans' fault. Not giving you know more tax benefits or raising taxes or learn or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I know my husband loves me. And then you find out he's been having an affair for 10 years. That happens all the time. And you see it in the news, and that's why it's a tragedy. You know, you hear about some talented, good little kid who bought some drugs, some pills online from a stranger that was, ended up being laced, and now they're dead. And there's that parent who goes, I knew my son or my daughter was a good kid. I don't understand how this happened. They were talented. They were lovable. They were musical. They weren't depressed. You see, it's not what you believe. It's what you know. And some people know so much that they're broke. They know so much, yet they're so angry and frustrated. They know so much about politics, yet they can't sleep at night. See, the first tip is like, you have to, to recognize the horrors of your ways, the tragedies, the, the way, the, where you are heading. Why did you have your weight loss surgery? You wanted your life to change. Why are you in this challenge? You want your life to change. Because at one, at some point you recognized, listen to me, you recognized if I keep going like this, I'm going to die. If I keep at 300 pounds, I'm going to die of a heart attack, of sleep apnea, of diabetes. I don't want to be like my grandmother or my mother-in-law. Or one day, comment if this is you. Share your story. One day, you're, get, you're gathered around your family at dinner, and you see your grandmother, who's overweight and diabetic. You see your mom, who's overweight and diabetic. 
You see your aunts who are overweight. You see your sisters who are overweight and your brothers with a big beer belly and whatever. And you go, holy shit, I'm going to end up like them. You see your grandfather who has, you know, his leg amputated, your brother who's, you know, just had a first major heart attack. And you go, dude, if, if I keep this up, I'm going to end up just like them. Fat, broke, monopeg, <laughs> one-legged, <laughs> in a wheelchair, angry, frustrated, on a fixed income. And you had to recognize, like, I, I got to change. I got to change. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That's saved. I'm going to cry. I told you. That saved a wretch like me. You got to go. I'm a, I'm a wretch. I'm a fucking wretch. I've taken this gift. And I'm wasting it. The Buddhist first thought is this. My precious human life. It takes a lot, guys, to become a human. You could have easily been born a grasshopper or a cricket or an earthworm. You could have easily not be here. <laughs> your daddy could have finished in your mama's leg. <laughs> you could have ended up at the tip of a condom. <laughs> but no. You're here. The odds of you being here are immense. And yet here you are. My precious human life. And I'm wasting it. I become a wretch. And I was a wretch. I don't like you, Dr. V. You calling me names now. Dude, I was a wretch. 2008. I was $4 million in debt. I was, my practice was not going well. I'd opened my surgical practice in 05. Uh, I was starting to turn it around doing bariatrics. And then Hurricane Ike hit me and wiped me out. $4 million in debt. I lost it all. I lost all the properties. I lost all the cars. I had 18 feet of water in my house. Um, I had, all these properties were damaged. The banks didn't give any forbearance. There was no help. There was no PPP. There was no loans. I had no mentors. I crawled up into the corner and I cried like a baby. Cried like a baby. I tread water for three more years trying to trying to make you know amends and make it work. And eventually by 2011, after three fucking years of suffering, I declared bankruptcy. I left my family to go to this little town in Illinois just to get a paycheck. And eventually it cost me my family. I was a wretch. I was that wretch. I got this paycheck in this little town in Illinois of 6,500 people. They they liked having me there, but I came there with my big city attitude, started rubbing people wrong, and then I realized it was me. I'm the problem. I'm the problem. I caused this, and I can fix this. I dove into personal development. I listened to 10 YouTube videos a day. I read books. I figured out how to change things. I recognized I was a wretch. I had burnt bridges. I had defaulted on loans on people that trusted me to pay back loans. I had robbed Peter to pay Paul. And I wasn't a bad guy. I was a hard worker. I was kind. I was a good surgeon. I just didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And it was grace. 
It was grace that saved a wretch like me. You have to remember that. At some point, you guys recognized I am living a wretched life and I'm a good fucking person. I'm a good person. Why is this happening to me? Why am I 300 pounds? Why am I diabetic? Why have why am I why do I have cancer again? I'm a good person. And then one day you find grace. Tip number two, if you are still struggling, if you are still dealing with weight regain, if you still haven't pulled the trigger on weight loss surgery, if you're still unhappy, if you still, you know, say, oh, no one would listen to me. I don't need to go live. I don't need to record. If you still have self-doubt, I'm going to ask you to sing that song amazing grace and listen let it touch your soul and you have to go i need to give myself some grace if you are still struggling with happiness if you are still stuck in a relationship you don't want to be in maybe what you need is a little more grace give yourself a little grace that saved a wretch like me. Tip number three, Wayne Dyer at the very beginning tells a story about his friend Portia Nelson, who was asked to write, you know, they were given five, five note cards, three by five note cards to write their life story on and she writes this poem which is really amazing that if you will listen to that it will change your life she says chapter one in my life i walk down the street there's a hole there and i don't see it and i fall in and i'm angry and i'm blaming people and it takes me a long time to get out but eventually i get out Chapter two of my life, I walk down the same street. I don't, I don't see the hole and I fall in. What? I'm here again? I'm angry. It's their fault. And it takes me a long time to get out. Chapter three of my life, I walk down the street. I see the hole and I fall in. And I say, it's a fucking habit. And I get out right away you know i i i get out right away chapter four of my life i walk down the same street i see the hole i walk around the hole i don't fall in chapter five of my life i walk down a new street tip number three for you it's time for you to walk down a new street it's time that we start walking down a new street. Dr. Vong, I just, I have so much self-doubt. I wouldn't walk down that street anymore. Dr. Vong, this is how we eat. You know, I wouldn't walk, I wouldn't walk down that street anymore. Dr. Vong, this is all my company pays. This is all they pay teachers. I wouldn't walk down that street anymore. I would walk down a new street. Dr. Vong, these are my favorites. I'm a chocoholic. I'm a carboholic. I'm a donutaholic. I'm a pasta holic. I wouldn't walk down the street anymore. Because you got to remember, it's not what you believe, but it's what you know that is wrong. It's what you know that got you stuck. It's what you know that got you here, living paycheck to paycheck. I wouldn't walk down that street anymore. I would walk down a new street. Oh, I'm still dealing with this weight regain. I can't get this weight regain off me. Oh, this fucking coronavirus has got this weight regain stuck on me. Hmm, really? You're going to keep walking down that street? What do you mean, Dr. V? It's the same street. No, fuck you, Dr. V. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Watch this. Comment 
if you put if you've lost weight before and put it back on say yes if you've lost weight before and you've put it back on watch all these yeses coming up and then what you will see is the aha if you have lost weight and put it back on before and now you're dealing with weight regain you're dealing with like um you know not sticking to it see all these yeses you're walking down the same fucking street no no this time it's coronavirus it's because we've been locked down no no this time it's because my husband's been laid off or furloughed and and eating healthy is too expensive that's the same fucking street guys it's the same reason you gave last time you regained the weight does this make sense can i have some ahas here like motherfucker he's right I'm walking down the same fucking street. I'm stalled. I'm regaining weight. It's time to walk down a different street. It's the end of the month. Who's who's worried? Put bills in the comment section. If you are not looking forward to bills, the bills are coming. Oh, I can pay them, Dr. V, but I just hate to pay them. Put bills in the comment section. If you know it's the end of the month and you're like, I might not have enough money or I'm stressed out or I'm stretching it. I'm stretching the budget. You see this? Aha. Yes. 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 Right? Put bills in the comment section. The bills are coming. Oh no, but Dr. Vong, I have money. I just don't like paying them. Those motherfuckers, they charge too much. That's the same street. But Dr. V, what do you do about your bills? See, they're on automatic payment. <laughs> I learned that trick. They're on auto pay. I don't pay bills. I love paying bills. Why do I love to pay bills? Because I don't pay them. They're just automatic. I don't even see them. They're just automatically taken out. Does that make sense? I, I walk down a different street. I learned a different pay. I, I learned a different way to pay. And now I have a great time. I don't stress out about it at the end of the month. I look forward to the end of the month because I know that's when, you know, all your subscriptions are going to auto renew. <laughs> and now you guys are going, God damn, you're right. He's right. Dr. B at the end of the month, his, his bank, bank account gets fat. See, that's a new road. I walk down a new street. Does this make sense? I decided when I retired and I left, I left surgery. What happened was I was director of bariatrics. I was the busiest bariatric surgeon in the state of New Mexico. This is 2018. And then I got a new CEO of the hospital and she was for whatever reason, not on the same page as me and caused trouble. And we just decided to part ways. That's all. And so I started, you know, they, they decided to shut down my program and they decided to, um, what, for whatever reason, you know, decided to shut down my program. No problems at all. Nothing bad. And so I started looking for jobs at Stanford. And I was like, maybe I'll go to an academic institution. Duke University, Cleveland Clinic, do some research, teach some residents, you know. And then I thought, it's the same shit everywhere. You know, it's, it's a paycheck every other week. Just like you guys. It's a paycheck. Now, it was a nice paycheck. I walked away from a nice paycheck. I mean, my base salary, I'll tell y'all, people in my challenge know, I don't care. I don't, I don't keep anything from y'all. My base salary as director of bariatrics is four twenty-five, four hundred twenty-five thousand a year. And I walked away from that. And then I had bonuses and stuff like that on top of that incentives. And, but that was my guaranteed base salary. And I walked away from that. Now that's a big check. Now, now, the government took 200000 of that, so I don't want to hear anyone complaining about taxes when I was paying $200,000 a year in taxes. But every other week, I would get a paycheck. And it was nice, and I was looking forward to it. And then I realized that it doesn't matter where I go. I, I'm no different than a secretary or the lab girl or the pulmonology tech or the x-ray tech. 
It's every two weeks a paycheck. And I needed that back in 2011 when I lost everything. But by 2018, I had 13 books. I had online courses. I was like, I don't need that in my life. I walked down a new road. I walked down a new street. I completely changed it. I completely went, I completely shifted my mindset. Tip number four, Wayne Dyer says at the, towards the beginning of the video today said, if you want something new in your life, if you want something new in your life, you have to expect it of yourself. You have to expect it of yourself. Tip number next one. If you want something new in your life, you have to expect it of yourself. You need to expect Wonderland. You need to expect 199 from yourself. You need to expect a size 10 from for yourself. You need to expect $1,000 in your bank account, $10,000 in your bank account, $100,000 in your savings. You need to expect it from yourself. You need to like quit it with the bullshit. Like, oh, someday, maybe, hopefully, I'd love to have open my own coffee shop. That'd be amazing. I'd love to own a coffee store. Oh, I don't really even know. I don't know what my passion is. I don't know what I'd want to do with my life. Stop it. That's fucking stupid. It's not even funny. It's sad. You need to start expecting it. If you want something in your life, you need to start expecting it. I expect a certain amount now. I expect millions this year. I haven't had millions, but I expect millions this year. I expect all you motherfuckers to sign up for the challenge. I expect y'all to sign up for the mastermind when I announce it. I expect y'all to look into resellers when I have Jerry on tomorrow night to explain resellers. For those of you who are watching, you have the opportunity to get a free $750 a month without ever coming out of pocket. You will not pay anything. This is not an MLM. This is not, this is not a network marketing opportunity. You, will, you do not have to buy anything, stock anything. You do not have to host parties. You get a free $750 a month. All you need to be is under 69, a US citizen. It's only available for US people, people are based in the United States, and a credit score of 620. And you cannot have another merchant service account. You're helping these online businesses to increase their merchant services. That's it. And for that, you get paid $750 a month. That's $9,000 a year. Plus, Dr. Vong made it so that Jerry's company, which they've been in business 18 years, Jerry's company will give you $100 a month for everybody that you sign up for resellers. So you get to sign other people up. It ends with you. This is a special Dr. V promotion. You get an extra $100 for everybody that you sign up. You sign up somebody, they get $750. Is that a smoking deal? Is that a good deal? They'll get $750 a month. You'll get an extra $100 a month. And, you, and I get an extra $100 a month. Every fucking month. It's not a one-time thing. It's not fucking Mary Kay it, where you sell it one time. Well, Dr. Vong, I, I, it's every month but I don't have a 620 credit score. Good, work towards it. You expect it of yourself. Next month, I'm gonna have a credit score of 620. That's all you need, you're not that far from it. If you just paid off one bill, if you just had one good month or two good months, you would get over that hurdle. I promise you. you first of all, you gotta be in the challenge. The offer is only for people in the challenge and I'm opening up the, P the challenge to people tomorrow. So some people go, but it's 47 bucks. Like I, it's half off, 47 bucks, half off. Why wouldn't you sign up and make 750 a month plus, and listen to this motherfucker, there's no limit to how many people you can sign up whose head is about to explode. There is no limit. Put a number of how many people you could sign up for free 750, 10 people, 20 people, 
If you signed up 20 people, multiply 20 times 100 right now. Who can do that in your head really fast? That's uh, $200, doctor. No, it's not. If you signed up 20 people, that's an extra $2,000. See? I'm in process. Got $300 to set things up. They even pay for you to set it up. You don't ever come out of pocket for anything. That's an extra $2,000 every month. Not one time, plus your seven fifty dollars every fucking month. Erica's like, dude, I can make... If you signed up 100 people, sign up 100 people, how many would that be? 100 people times 100. $10,000 a month. There is no limit to how many people you could sign up if you do resellers under Dr. V. Crazy. Catherine Cannell's about to get her check. Isn't that crazy? That's right. Ashley Kirby can do math. $10,000 a month. Every fucking month. But there's got to be a scam. There's got to be a catch. There's got to be a thingamajiggy. Dude, stop it. Stop it. What you think is fucking you up. You got to walk down a new street. Oh, but I couldn't tell. There must, I couldn't do it. There, that's not possible for me. You, in order to have what you've never had before, you have to start expecting it of yourself. I expect money to start rolling in here because it's the end of the month. I don't even hope. I don't cross my fingers anymore. I expect it. I expect 20 push-ups before I garden. I expect this garden to bloom. I expect this garden to bloom. I expect my hair to grow back. I expect laughter. I expect a well-behaved kid. I expect straight A's from her. I expect all A's from Erica. You got you understand what I'm saying? You have to start expecting it from yourself. Last tip. I'm done yelling at y'all. Last tip. Okay. Tune in tomorrow night if you want to learn about resellers. It's the Dr. V's ultimate money tree. Dude, it's free fucking money. Ultimate money tree. And Jerry's going to be on to explain it to y'all. Because y'all got tax questions, things like that. He can answer all that for you. Wayne Dyer in this video talks about a book that says... You know, the three most powerful words, the three most powerful words, the three uh, words that can change your life. And it's a big book and you read each chapter and it never tells you the three most powerful words until chapter 12, the revealing. And he reveals the most powerful words is this. You are God. Now, some people might get triggered by that. Some people might say that's blasphemy. No, how dare you? There is only one all-powerful God. You can't tell me about my God. Yes, I know. And that's why you're stuck where you are. It's not what you believe, man. It's what you know. Listen, you're not even open to the message. And Wayne Dyer goes on to say, it's not an angry God that demands worship from you, that withholds miracles unless you believe in him. Wayne Dyer says it's the God of Jesus. And Jesus himself in the Bible says God is love. And if you open yourself to God is love and I am God, and Christ says the kingdom of God is within you, and you can do all things that I can do, and even more, Jesus does the biggest switcheroo on you. Jesus says, if you will follow me, I will show you how to get into the kingdom of heaven. I am the way to the kingdom of heaven. And, and when he dies, the big switcheroo is this. He goes, the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. You, will, you guys hearing me? The kingdom of heaven is inside of you. Wow. 
wow. What I know is wrong. Not what I believe, what I know. Amazing grace. Dr. V, how do I get amazing grace? How do I get this grace? It's inside of you. It's inside of you. How do I walk down a new street? How do I break these old habits? How do I stop snacking at night? It's inside of you. The kingdom of heaven is inside of you. The answer is inside of you. How do I change my beliefs? You just do. You just do. You just tap into it. We talk about this other video in the challenge, Joel Osteen. It's called the power of I am. The words that you use that follow I am determines your whole life. I am love. I am powerful. I am anointed. Why would you believe in a God that withholds miracles? Why do you believe in an angry God? Why wouldn't you believe that a God would put you on this planet to suffer? I don't believe in that God. I would believe, I would choose to believe in a God that is kind and loving and would want the most for me. Money's made up. They just printed the $1.9 trillion. Where's your money? Why wouldn't you believe it? Why would you believe that there's a scam in a business that's been available that's been in business for 18 years? And you still think that it's not available to you. I am wealthy. I am abundant. Abundance comes knocking for you. I am love. Love comes knocking for you. I am peace. Peace comes come, comes looking for you. But no. Y'all talk about I am stressed out. I am a chocolate chip cookie. I am hungry. I am hungry. I am hungry. Dr. Vong, how do I stop this hunger? I am hungry. I am hungry. I am frustrated. I am angry. I am lost. I am bored. I'm bored and that's why I eat. You're fucking bored? My precious human life? How dare you waste your precious human life? I am bored. What is wrong with you? You are a child of God. You've been divinely blessed. You woke up today and a million people died. A million people did not wake up today. I am divinely made. I am blessed. I am a child of God. Dr. V, how did you fix yourself? How could you how did you find the courage to walk down a new road? How could you turn away from that big ass salary? Because I knew it was in me. I knew not I believed. I knew it was in me. I was capable of it. I was in these masterminds and I said, I think I have $10,000 a day within me. I'm currently making $10,000 passive a day. This was 2018. I mean, $10,000 passively a month. Sometimes it's 8,000 a month, passive income. I wake up and there's eight, $10,000 in my bank account. And I said, I think there's $10,000 a day in me. That's $300,000 a month. I'm not there yet, but I, I, I was like, I, I think it's in there. And then I thought one day, I know it's in there. I know it's in there. And that's made all the difference. And that has made all the difference. I love you guys very much. Be awesome. Be amazing. Show up today, right? See you tomorrow night at my broadcast for um, when I bring Jerry on to explain the Ultimate Money Tree, the resellers program. All you have, you have to be an American. You have to be uh, 21 to 69 years old, credit score of 620, and no merchants, no merchant services. You will get paid. $750 a month. That's $9,000 a year. You will never come out of pocket. I will. Ne they will never ask you for any money. 
Um, you get nine thousand dollars. Yes, you got to pay taxes on those nine thousand dollars. That's up to you. And with the Dr. Vong program, the plus one is you for everybody that you sign up for resellers, you get to make a hundred dollars a month, not one time, an extra one hundred dollars a month. As long as they're getting seven fifty a month, you get a hundred dollars a month, and I get a hundred dollars a month. Jerry will be on to explain all that for you tomorrow night. Have a great, amazing day. Do not waste today your precious human life. Love you guys. Bye.